Hi. Well, I have to say that I was quite a late adopter of the control room in Cubase, mostly because I thought I didn't need it. I could do everything I wanted with Cubase already, and also a bit because I didn't quite fully understand it. Now, if you're in a similar situation, hang on, because I'm going to explain to you exactly how it works and why also you should use the Cubase control room. And even if you're already a Cubase control room veteran, I'm pretty sure you'll learn something new as well. So let's go. Now the Cubase control room basically provides all kinds of features in Cubase that allow you to divide your studio environment into a recording area, the studio, and an engineering producer area being the control room. And even if you're now thinking, well, I never record other people or even myself, hang in there because the control room is still useful to you as well. But first of all, where can you find the control room in Cubase? Let's have a look. So there's basically two ways to access the control room features. One is via studio control room and this provides you a separate window with all the control room knobs and buttons but i have to say i usually use the control room in the right area of the window so i enable the right zone over here and then the control room features are right there there's various other tabs as well but if one of the other ones is selected you can just select the control room and you have all the control room features but first of all you may not actually have all of the controls in this control room tab because you need to enable and set up the control room and that's what you can do over here. Studio audio connections. If you go to control room, if you have it disabled, it basically looks like this. And you see in the right area, you see that control room is disabled. I can enable it again also from here. And everything is back the way it was. Now the next thing that you need to do to use the control room is to make sure that your outputs, your main stereo out, and that's the default that Cubase uses for your stereo out channel. Because if I open the mixer, you see over here, all of my tracks, which are only two in this project, are routed to stereo out. And on the stereo out outputs, you have to make sure that these are not connected. Because the mix that you make in Cubase ends up on this stereo out channel. But you don't want to directly connect it to the outputs of your audio interface, but you want to go through control room first. Now in order to do that, if you have multiple outs here, you can assign one output bus as the main mix in control room, which is done by this check mark over here. But if you only have one output bus, then Cubase automatically assigns it as the main mix when you turn on the control room. And that means that whatever you send to the stereo out ends up in the control room as the main mix over here. Now you do also see lots of other items here in the control room. And that's because if you go back to the control room setup over here, you can add channels to your control room. Now, one important thing to always add in the control room is a monitor channel. I've already added my monitor one channel over here. This is going to my stereo audio pair, the Adam audio monitors, and they are connected via output one and two on my audio interface. Now, if you have another pair of monitors, you can add them to separate outputs like this. I have monitor two and I can, for example, connect them to outputs eight and nine. However, if you have connected both monitors to the same physical output of your audio interface, maybe because there's a monitor controller in between, then it's also possible to select the same outputs, but not directly, because if you select output one for monitor two as well, it says this selected device port is used exclusively. This connection will be ended. Do you want to continue? Well, I don't want to do that, but there is a preference in which I can change this. There is a control room section over here. And if you turn this off, exclusive device ports for monitor channels, then now it is possible to connect the same outputs to different monitor pairs, just in case you need this in your setup. Now next to monitor channels, it is also possible to set up Q channels. And as you see over here, I have already set up a Q channel here. And a Q channel is basically an output channel that you can use to send a separate mix to your musicians in the studio environment. So instead of sending them the main mix that you're hearing as an engineer, you can send them a special mix with maybe their own instrument slightly louder or softer or whatever they wish. And that is called a Q channel. Now you can add multiple Q channels, four in total, because I can still add three now. But let's stay with this one Q channel for now. And let me also assign some outputs. For example, in this case, the outputs 10 and 11 are routed to a headphone amp that powers the headphones for the musicians, which all can get a separate mix from the main mix. Now, if by now you like this video, please give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm so that it can spread to more people. Subscribe to the channel. And if you want to get notified when I post another video, you can push the little bell icon.
And in addition, if you want to support the channel, you can use the super thanks button below the video or use one of the affiliate links in the description below to any of these stores. If you buy anything at these stores, after clicking the link, I will get a small commission and that will support this channel. But let's get back to the channel types in the control room because we dealt with monitor and queue channels now, but there's two other ones. For example, you can add an external input and maybe that input is CD player. These are the inputs of your audio interface that your CD player is connected to, for example, eight and nine. And you can route the output of the CD player then to any of your outputs in the control room, like for example, your monitors or even your QSense. And the last channel type that's available is the talkback. This is another input channel, and this allows you to connect a microphone, for example, to input 10, that you can then also route to any of the outputs of your control room. So summarizing, Talkback input channel, external input, I call it CD player over here, also an input channel. QMix1 is an output of the control room. Phones, oh, I skipped that one. That's actually also a channel type, but it wasn't in my list because you can only add one phones channel. So these outputs are routed to my headphones. And typically these are the headphones that the engineer is using. And then I have two monitor channels, which are also outputs that are routed to two different monitor pairs that I have in the studio. So now that I've set up all of this in the audio connection control room tab, what can you do with it? Let's have a look. Now, if you look at the control room section here to the right, you can see that it starts with the Q section and it starts with the Q1 section over here because I only have set up one Q. If you have set up another Q output for another Q mix maybe, then you would get an additional Q2 section in the control room. But with these buttons, I can determine what is actually sent to my Q output. So that was for the musician or musicians wearing the headphones in the studio, right? So I can choose to send just the main mix to my musicians, like the one I'm listening to myself. I can also choose to send the external input to the Q1 output, which is a CD player that I set up. Or I can choose to send the Q mix to my Q1 output. And that's actually the default and exactly what Q mixes are for. Because if you now go to your mixer, and in order to see this, you need to enable Rex Q sense over here. Let me actually shift this a little bit so you can see anything that falls to the right of my window a bit. And in order to make a mix, I can, for example, enable the Q sense and send the bass soft to the Q output and the drum mix loud. Or I can do it the other way, loud bass, soft drums. Now what I can also do, if I have a certain mix level for these channels in the main mix, and I then select them in the mixer, I can also say over here, from selected mixer channels, use current mix levels. And I then also need to enable them. And you can now see that two things have happened basically. The level in the Q sent here is equal to the level on my faders over here. And the Q sends have been set to pre-fader so that if I change the level on my main mix, that does not impact the level that is sent to Q1. So any mix that I've set up over here is now independent of my main mix. I can also globally change my Q send level. And if I do it like this, you can see that they basically all move up or down with the same amount. If I want to set all of them to the same value, I can do that as well. Then of course you've lost your relative position of the Q sends. Now another option that you can do over here is to copy the pan settings of the mix. And you can also reset the Q sends to that default value and off. Now you need to remember that these options only apply to the selected mixer channels. Now there are some other controls over here. Talkback, this determines whether the signal that I sent through the talkback microphone will also get sent to the Q outputs. And this is the level the talkback microphone will be sent at. And this button determines whether any metronome of Cubase will also get sent to the Q output. You can change the level of the click or the pan position, which is especially useful if you have singers, for example, which have one cup of your headphones not on their ears. So you may not want to send a click track to that side of the headphones to avoid bleed into the microphone. And of course, you also have a fader to determine the level of the Q send that's going to the output. Now the channels is not something I use a lot, but it basically shows the speaker arrangement of the main mix bus. And because I only have stereo speakers, it is not so interesting, but you can basically mute one channel 
or mute the other channel and only listen to one channel at a time. And the rest of these buttons are really more useful when you have a multi-channel speaker system, for example, for Dolby Atmos. Then you have lots of tricks that allows you to route certain channels to only the center and etc. The next section is the downmix presets. Now right now, because I only have a stereo pair of monitors, I can choose to either send stereo to them or send mono to my main mix. And if you want to, if you have a more elaborate speaker setup, you can name an additional downmix preset and you can even determine how the various channels of your mixer configuration are mixed to the downmix preset. Now then up next, you have your configured monitors. By selecting this, I'm activating either my first monitor pair or my second monitor pair. This section determines what I'm sending to my headphones. It can either be the mix, or it can be my external input being the CD player, or it can be what I'm sending to the musician. So I can also listen as an engineer, I can listen to the mix that I'm sending to the musicians via Q1. Again, I can determine whether the metronome is active in my headphones and I can determine the level of my headphones. When I have the click enabled, I can also set the level of the click, the pan position of the click. And this is actually also a very interesting option. This is the listen bus. If I go back to my regular project view, you can see that there's a listen button on these channels. And when I push this, what happens is that this channel gets sent to the so-called listen bus in Cubase. And right now you may say, well, why not just use the solo button if you want to listen to just this channel? But the listen bus also allows you to very easily listen to, for example, effect channels without having to set up all kinds of solo and mute conditions on the inputs to those effect channels. So basically, if you push the listen button over here, this channel gets sent to the listen bus. And the listen section over here determines whether the listen bus gets sent to my phone's output as well. In this way, it gets sent to my phone's output and I can also determine what the level is of the listen bus that gets sent to my phone's output. Now we see similar controls in the main section over here. So this determines what I'm listening through via my speakers, either the mix, the external input, or the cue that I'm sending to the musicians. If I want to be able to talk in the control room, I can push the dim button, which basically turns down the signal that I'm sending to my monitors and the level for that can be set up over here again. So dim volume is minus 30 dB. So it really gets a lot quieter if I push the dim button. With this button, I can set a certain reference level on my monitors. I have it set to minus eight. And again, that can be set up in the preferences, reference level minus eight. And also for the main output, I can determine whether I want to hear the metronome or not. Now A and B over here are shortcuts for which monitors I want to listen to, right? You saw here A monitor one, B is monitor two. I can also quickly engage those over here. I can also quickly switch between my downmix presets here, either mono or stereo. And this allows me to engage the talkback microphone. I can click so that I'm able to talk and click again. So that is muted again. Now you can also click and hold so that talkback is only enabled when you hold the mouse button. If I then release it, talkback mic is disabled again. Now also for my main outputs, I can determine the level of the click and the pan position of the click. I can also determine that when I push the talkback button, what happens to the rest of the main mix. So that's a talk dim. Basically the mix gets reduced by 12 dB if I push talkback so that everybody can clearly hear me. Again, I have the ability to use the listen bus. And over here, I can also say whether I want the listen bus to be pre-fader or after-fader listen mode. So in after-fader listen mode, the level of the fader actually determines how loud I can hear the channel on which listen is engaged. Total level of the listen bus is zero. And listen dim is another feature which tells you what happens to the channels on which I have not pushed the L listen button. Right now it's set to minus infinity, which means that I will not hear any other channels. However, I can also set this to another value, for example, a minus 11. And in that case, whenever I listen to a channel, I can still hear all of the other channels, but at a reduced level. So like I said in the beginning, there's a lot of useful stuff in the control room. Hang in there, we're almost there. Let's see the insert step, which is down on the right here. And this basically allows you to set up insert effects on all of the outputs in the control room. For example, on my main mix, you can see that I have a couple of metering and reference plugins. For example, metric AB, which allows me to listen to reference tracks. I have a loudness meter. I also have span, frequency analyzer setup on here. And I have an old style 
view meter on there. And by the way, what's good to know is that this is not something you need to set up for every project separately, because the control room is a setup that Cubase remembers between various projects. So it's a global setup. So you basically set up all these QSense and talkback channels and insert effects once, and then you can use them in all your projects. Now, apart from the main section, it's also possible to set up special insert effects on your headphones. I don't have them, but you can imagine that there could be some kind of headphone spatial audio plugin in there, which gives you a more 3D sound. It's possible to set up insert effects on your monitors, and you can set up separate insert effects for your separate monitor pairs, like, right, I'm switching between monitor pairs now, and you can see, for example, that I have my speaker correction software set up on my main monitors. This is with the profile for my main monitors, but you can imagine that if I have different monitors on my B channel, I can set up another Another instance of my room correction software and use the profile that I have for the other monitor set. Now the same thing on QSense, I can set up insert effects on the mix that I'm sending to my musicians if I wanted to. I can set up insert effects on my external inputs and I can even set up insert effects on my talkback microphone. Maybe a nice compressor on there would be useful to make sure that the musicians always hear me clearly at the same level. Now and finally as for control room functionality if you go to the meter section over here you can also enable the control room in that meter section and then your meter gets a little bit smaller but you will have the ability to switch some of the main functions in your control room or for example use the talkback button. So lots of functionality there in the Cubase control room and you may wonder do I really need this when I'm just recording by myself and do not really have a studio environment and a control room environment but I would say yes. One. Otherwise you cannot use the listen bus. So the listen bus is ideal to quickly listen to just an effects channel, for example, and you cannot do this easily without the control room. Second reason is you can use the Q mixes for all kinds of fun stuff. For example, one application would be to use them for reference mixes. So if you have a reference mix track in your project, you can just send it to the Q channel. And then in your main mix area, you can switch between your mix and the reference mix by selecting between mix and Q1. And this allows you to hear your mix with all your mix bus processing and the Q-Mix without the mix bus processing, for example. And another nice application of the Q-Mix is even if you're recording by yourself, you may want to hear a different mix when you're recording compared to when you're mixing. So on your main faders, you can just set up the mix. And in Q-Mix 1, you can set up the levels that you want to hear when you're recording. Maybe you want to hear yourself a little bit louder or softer. Or maybe you want to bring up the kick level a bit if you really want to lean in to the kick part when you're a bass player, for example. And if you have some other way to use the control room features, please write it down in the comments below. Always nice to have some additional tips and tricks. Now, another big reason that I'm using control room is also that it allows me to nicely record the audio for these YouTube videos that you're watching via OBS. And I have a separate video about that that you can check out over here. Have a look, enjoy, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.